Hi everyone, welcome to the Yarn Flakes podcast episode 27. My name is Audrey and this is a podcast about primarily knitting but also all of the kind of fiber crafts such as weaving, cross stitch and sometimes spinning and dyeing yarn. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all had a lovely week. Uh, I did. Just a little heads up for this episode. I, I had to switch the camera angle and everything because not only is it super windy today here in the southwest of France where I live, um, so if you hear some wind, I'm sorry, but it's also super sunny and the sunlight just spot directly into my room and I just can't make it work with the way I usually film which is facing the window because I had massive shadows obviously you're definitely gonna hear the wind this is not even the strongest wind that we're used to this is like medium medium wind I do apologize if there's this constant background noises of trees fighting for their lives so yes if the light is a little bit off um although it seems all right to me right now looking at the screen um and the colors seem pretty decent um if it bothers you anyway i am really sorry there's not too much i can do about it and i'm certainly not going to complain too much about the sun you can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below. So if you want to jump to any of those or if you're not interested in a segment, just feel free to click there and do so. There will also be links to everything that I talk about as well as where you can find me on the social media. This week I have one finished object and a couple of new uh, cast-ons to show you knitting-wise. So that's exciting. I also have a um, new cross stitch and in the dream knitting slash yarn show segment of the podcast we will talk about singles. Singles yarn. So let's start before my house just fly away. Um, as far as knitting goes I have like I said one finished object and it's the Deline Show by Melanie Berg. Uh, let me... Uh, Try to show you the right side first. And here it is. So this is a lace weight shawl that's knit uh, from point to point. It's a um, weird shape. <laughs> it has one flat edge here at the top of this um, stockinette part. And then this lace, um, let me put it against the wall so you can actually see the pattern. You know, this is actually a better position to show you things because I have like a, a blank background instead of a door. So you can actually see the lace pattern on this for the first time. But I've been showing it since a lot of episodes. <laughs> but oh well, I'll see. Maybe I'll switch back to that, to that position. I guess I'll have to keep changing depending on the weather. But anyway, yes, I, uh, what, what's happening there? Yeah. I am very happy to have it finished. This was definitely not the funniest thing to knit with. Um, it's a 12 row repeat pattern. So you're basically knitting the stock in it and then this, uh, lace pattern over and over and over again. And, um, it's a pattern that I couldn't memorize, but it was not um, too engaging either, so I got a little bit bored, but I must say that the finished shawl is just so beautiful. It's the most delicate thing I ever knit. It's super soft. I knit it in Drops Lace, which is a silk and alpaca blend, and it is very light. This burgundy wine color is beautiful. So as you can see, it's fairly see-through. It's definitely a shawl for looks and not for warmth. Um, it's quite long. It's a, uh, yeah, yep. It's a teeny by teeny tiny bit longer than my wings, wingspan, which is what I intended. And this really is like proof that 
blocking is magic. I soaked this shawl for a fairly long time and then I stretched it out in the sun outside and the lace just got gorgeous. It's not perfect because um, I know I've made quite a few mistakes um, and especially at the borders I had to fiddle with things on both borders actually. I dropped st stitches, blop, I dropped <laughs> stitches and <laughs> I made... <laughs> oh god, have you seen this Russian video? Um, the singer that's like... And he does something with his <laughs> mouth and tongue that looks exactly like what I just did. Um, and that was an intentional. I'm not going to link it in the video description, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't look for it, because it will traumatize you. Anyway, yes, I dropped stitches, I fiddled with the pattern, so it's not perfect. And the worst thing I did is... Are you going to be able to see it? Yeah, you can kind of see. You know when you make something that you know is wrong but you do it anyway like not changing balls at the edge <laughs> changing balls of yarn is this gonna be the episode of in windows and weird weird things i guess not changing balls of yarns at the edge of a project and then you end up with like very obvious patch where you've woven in the ends. It's okay, it's not that bad. It looks terrible from the wrong side. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell. Eh, you can definitely see. <sighs> it's not gonna make much of a difference when it's going to be worn and I'm a little bit angry at myself for that, but I decided to roll with it because I don't have time to start over. And yeah, it's, just, it's still very beautiful shawl and I'm very pleased with it. Um, the edge is still rolling, uh, no matter how much I pinned it while blocking, it's still rolling. But when I looked at all the pictures of the projects on Ravelry, they were all rolling, so I guess that's part of the look of it and it actually makes maybe a little uh, chunkier bit here around your neck so yes so despite the meh knitting process of it and the few silly mistakes um, I'm very happy with it and it looks beautiful Now I have to fold it back prettily. How do you even fold shawls? I, um, yeah, I'm curious. How do you store shawls? I just, um, moved my storage system around and I basically moved my stash of yarn, which is now in front of me, uh, on top of a shelf. Uh, so I could free some, um, closet thingy and um, baskets. So I now have a basket of shawls and they're just stuck in there, um, not folded or anything. That's the best option I came up with. So the next work in progress I want to share with you is my peony top, which is a linen tank top by Verena Coves. And if you remember last time I had finished the back so I am now on a mission. I want to finish this like yesterday. Um, I haven't been knitting on this for too long, probably like a month or something, but that's very long for me. And the thing is, it's knit flat and it's linen, so it's actually um, very slow knitting the rows for me. I just... Um, feels harsher, it's not slicking as uh, fast as wool, wool yarn. Um, I enjoy it, it's very different and like I keep saying, I really like knitting with linen, but it's definitely slower. 
So <laughs> when I finished the back and I was, it came like bursting into me. Uh, I need to do the same thing all over again, even though it's not the same stitch count. I just decided, okay, I need to focus on it. I'm gonna zoom through it and I'm going to finish it. So I started the front last week and I did, I did the lace hem, I did the waist shaping and I am now on the straight part of the body uh, up until the armhole. So I believe I have 30 rows left of stock in it, which I can do in like two or three hours if I don't get distracted. Um, so after that, you'll have the two part of the um, neck and thing. Uh, so, and that will go rather fast, I hope. So there's this chance that I finish the front this week and that I can maybe block it and seam everything. So I'm not promising that I'll have it done by next podcast, but I'll be very close. Like I said, I'm dedicated to finishing it and I'm not working on my other garment, which is the Marius cardigan that I'm knitting until I finish this because two garments on the go at the same time well more like one that's linen and fairly slow to knit and one that's a big oversized cardigan with lots of stock in it that's a no-no so <laughs> I will finish this before I get on with the rest if you remember, I was a bit worried about the fitting and I still am, which is part of why I really, really want to have this done. My problem is that I don't have a ton of yarn left. Uh, basically, <laughs> uh, it's knit held double. So I have this left and then I have another skein. Here it is. I had five skeins to start with and um, each skein is... 50 grams and 245 meters and that is a lot more yardage than what the patterns calls for for my size. I'm knitting the second size which is for um, a finished measurement of I believe 37 inches that's like 94 centimeters um, and the pattern calls for uh, under a thousand meters it's 980 meters so i actually ordered the yarn before the pattern was released and i kind of winged it and ordered five skeins and it's a good thing i did because if i had um, seen the yardage the meterage that the pattern required i would have ordered only four and i wouldn't have had enough um, they're extremely affordable though, so that's not a problem. I think it's five euros per skein, which is for a linen that quality and the range of colors that uh, they have. I didn't even say what yarn it is. It's Lino Muka. There it is. I keep saying it for a lot of episode stuff, so you probably know. Um, what was I saying? Yes, uh, I ordered five skeins, so, and I'm definitely going to knit it. I'm gonna have to uh, wind it, because uh, I think I'm gonna definitely uh, finish the top um, with that. And then you have to work a little bit of a rolled uh, edge at the neck and at the armholes, and then to seam it, of course. So, yes, that, however, is totally the fault of my gauge uh, I have a very tight row gauge because I want a fabric that's um, as dense as possible because I don't want it to be see-through you see this is the blocked back and this is what I want I don't want it to be transparent because it's a linen top for the summer and I never get the point of summer tops that are transparent uh, because then you need to have something underneath, but if it's for summer, 
it's boiling hot, so I don't want to have something under a top. So I wanted it to be dense, so my row gauge is about a good six, seven centimeters smaller than um, the designer's gauge. So I guess that's why uh, I'm a little bit uh, short under yardage. Um, however, like I said, I only have about 30 rows of stock in it before I bind off for the armholes and I split to work the points of the collar. So I'll definitely have enough yarn. And if I don't, I'll just undo my swatch. Because I swatched really. <laughs> it's, this is actually the first garment I swatched for, because I usually don't swatch. And it's actually in that situation, I swatched for it. And it's the first time that I'm scared about the yardage and sizing and everything. So what I initially wanted to say was that I am still scared about how it's going to fit. So what I did is that I laid a tank top that fits me, that I like the fit of, uh, flat, and then I put the back on top of it. And it seems good. It seems really good. Uh, lengthwise, it's uh, very similar. And the armhole is actually going to be more um, open. So lengthwise, it's fine. Uh, Widthwise, width, width. What's that? Regarding the width, it's um, like four, five centimeters smaller, which I suspected it would be because I, when I blocked it, I stretched it like a maniac, which meant that obviously if you stretch something in one direction, it loses. Um, length in the other direction so um yeah there's four or five centimeters less i think it can work though because that tank top that i had as a reference is quite loose and it's also longer um by longer i mean it goes way over my hips um and i have a fairly wide hip <laughs> um so yeah this will fall a little bit higher so it maybe won't need as much space but yes so i hope it's gonna be all right i think it should be i'm a little bit reassured having done that uh, comparison with the store-bought tank top that fits me um but yeah, I really like the lace hem. I'm really happy that I am close to finishing this because it's beautiful and it's going to feel so good. And the color is gorgeous. It's grass green. And like I said, it comes in so many different colors that I can't even. I might get some more uh, for other summer tops next year. I'm not looking forward to dealing with this. Yeah. The cake is dying. Next project on the needle is actually three projects. Um, I was making ankle socks as samples for my hand dyed yarns and I don't actually remember where I was last time I showed you. But I feel I've done quite a lot of progress as I'm almost done with them. I have one pair done. Done as in I have the tube. Uh, all of them are knit toe up and I'm going to make afterthoughts heels. So which is why I have some little markers placed uh, to cut through um, the yarn. I used the Kirby Werby True Afterthoughts method which has no waste yarn which is super easy uh, i'm gonna link it, link it down below and i really like making afterthought seal each of the sock will have a contrasting cuff and heel so um this colorway is weirdo on maple street which 
I really like. This is a 60 stitch sock, so that's how it is knitting up. It's kind of a micro stripey effect, which is really fun. And it's gonna have a cream contrast because because it made zero sense and I felt that it actually looked quite nice because let me take the white skin. I'm gonna put puff in the heels and it's gonna kind of brighten that colorway, that spooky colorway. So this is on my sock base. It's a wool, um, pure wool, wooly wool, uh, but still soft. It's just sturdier than the merino sock. 75-25% uh, nylon. And the contrast color I'm using is Wool But Sockly, which is a German sock yarn that is softer than opal, to give a comparison. Um, I actually never had Regia yarns because I can't seem to find a, a seller that has a nice choice of Opal and Regia. But I have that brand, so I still have my German sock yarn. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go over my <laughs> binding of cuff drama again. Um, I uh, bind off using the simple stretchy bind off and it works well on 2x2 two two rib which is what I have to do for these socks. The second pair is also done and this is the red bone colorway which is like a variegated green and brownish red with orange and cream speckles and I really like how this one knitted up too. And I think this one will look especially good on a bigger number of stitches. Like if you were to make a hat, for example, I think this might look really nice. The contrasting color is a bright orange. When I pop in the, eel, the heels, it will look absolutely insane. I feel like I'm really at the bottom of the of the screen right now. Is that better? I'm kind of in a fight with my tripod, so I'm constantly scared that the phone pops out of it and fall um, falls. So that's why I don't like touching it that much. But yeah, that's definitely a better angle. And. The last sock that I'm working on is my special Halloweeny self-striping colorway and it's Jungle Bat and I have one done so I only have to make the other tube and then those ankle socks will be almost done and I just need uh, to go on a heels spree so yes Jungle Bat charcoal brown and green three color stripes. I really like how that worked. And I'm using a black uh, contrast. So yeah, I'm gonna cast this one on um, maybe tomorrow and I definitely think that by next week I'll have those three pairs of ankle socks done. Yay! So I didn't mention it, but obviously if you like the colorways, they are up for sale in my Etsy shop, which will be linked down below. I now have two new projects to show you. As I finished the Delling Shawl, I uh, decided to start two new things, um, which are Christmas gifts, so I really need to get on with them. Yes, I'm talking about Christmas in the middle of October, but that's because I have a lot of Christmas gift knitting to do. Um, so I, I am actually not that uh, advanced. Especially since I need to um, make a sweater for my mother for her birthday. Because yes, my mother is one of those people that have a birthday in December. But it's not close enough to December that you can just make one gift for 
both birthdays and Christmas. It's in the middle of December, so... My birthday is in the 1st of June, so it's right in the middle of the year. How nice of me. Anyway, the first project is the Alley Socks, which is a pattern by Julie... Julie, let me check. <laughs> Julie Elswick... Suchomets? That sounds French, but no. Suchomel. Such I'll write it down here. Um, it's, uh, you know those cable owls? So there's a sweater design uh, with owls on the yokes and there's uh, a bunch of things and these are pretty socks with this uh, same cable uh, pattern and I am knitting this for my boyfriend because he likes owls so yeah I am knitting it out of uh, my hand dyed yarn that I dyed in like a charcoal grey I am really proud of this tonal I love it speaking of the devil Please tripod, just please. <laughs> I really like this tunnel. Um, I will in the new year try to release a tunnel collection because I really like hand-dyed tunnel yarns and I don't have any in the shop at the moment. So I'm going to focus on Christmas yarns for the month of November, but I think, yeah, January, February, I'll release some tunnels because these kind of things are just perfect for pattern socks that needs a little bit um, more of a clear stitch definition so you can have fun with your knitting. I only did the cuff <laughs> so far. It's a twisted rib and there's some really tiny one, one by one cabling here can't really see. It's more obvious in real life. So in the pattern, the owls are all over the sock, but I'm just going to make one row of owls at the top of the sock and then make a plain uh, stockinette sock. I feel like that would be a little bit more subtle uh, because of all of the owls. Yeah, might be a little bit too much for a man, no matter how much he likes owls. So yeah, that, that's all I have done. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting to finish my ankle socks and then I'm gonna get cracking on with those. Uh, I am knitting them with a 64 stitch count on two millimeters, which um, should fit my boyfriend uh, with the cables. It's going to tighten it a little bit. And yes. I'm sorry for the camera that keeps going up and I keeps pushing it back. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. Um, I need to buy a new tripod, I guess, but yeah. The last knitting work in progress is a shawl, a new shawl. And did I show you the right side? Oh, yes, I did. This is another pattern by Melanie Berg. It's the Rainlust shawl. And Oh my god, isn't that stitch pattern absolutely beautiful? It's um, it's easy to knit, it's really easy to knit and it's super engaging. So I actually finished the that left tip um, because then I believe it's a garter stitch section. This continues and then you have a garter stitch uh, portion of the shawl until you reach a point and then you decrease back into the other tip. Um, and I finished the first part, so to say, the first section in like two days because it was so fun to knit. I just couldn't stop. I was really focused on following. It's a 22 row repeat, I think 22, yeah, 22 or 24. And you have to do it um, seven times, I think. And I did it in two days and it's, I don't know, I find it really enjoyable and meditative um, and the result is just, it's just beautiful. Uh, I am knitting with <laughs> its Drops Baby Merino. What happened to you? It's Drops Baby Merino, um, which has an extremely good stitch definition, which is nice for those 
twisted stitches and this is the back look the back is pretty as well it's just bumpier because you see the um, non-twisted stitches whereas the right side are twisted and the colorway is light gray color 22 it's um um it's a mixed it's a mixed gray color um which looks really neat in that pattern so this is a hundred percent merino it's super wash um it knits super fast it's just sliding off the needles i'm using addies uh, i believe these are laced with the red cable um 3.5 millimeter or four i don't remember no 3.5 and yeah it's just working so fast and it's so fascinating uh, as soon as I finish my peony top, I'm going to focus on that, I believe. Forever forgetting the poor Marius cardigan. I am working on it. I'm making like a couple rows here and there. But you know, it's just stuck in it, so I'm go not going to show you. Until I actually... Okay, maybe I'll show you the sleeves. <laughs> but uh, I think you won't see it until I actually am doing the color work. So this is it for the knitting content of this episode. I have some cross stitch to share. If you remember last time I showed you this thing here that I finished just, these were my little foxes cross stitch. It was my first time doing cross stitch, doing cross stitch. And I really enjoyed it. I found it really relaxing and a nice breaks for my wrists and fingers from knitting. Um, so I jumped straight in my second cross stitch project and <laughs> my god it's so yellow here it is um, this is going to be Bimio BMO I don't know how you're supposed to my boyfriend says Bimio because that's for him it's a character from Adventure Time um, I never really got into Adventure Time I watched, I watched a few episodes, but I enjoyed them, but not to the point of saying, okay, I'm going to f actually follow all the episodes. But my boyfriend is a real big fan, and um, this is a pattern by Stitchering, which has a lot of uh, uh, like um, nerdy pop culture patterns she has a few adventure time patterns and i showed it to my boyfriend and i said okay what do you want and he picked uh he picked bimio which is just blocks of colors so i was like okay fine <laughs> um so it's definitely going to be much easier to stitch than this which had a lot of little points this is mainly just you know you're gonna have the face and have another eye here um it looks like a game boy I don't know if it's a Game Boy, but it looks like a Game Boy. <laughs> and then it's gonna have like the body uh, all around, which is another block of color. And then it's gonna have some buttons here, which are like rectangles. So it's a very easy pattern to follow, uh, very straightforward. So my goal with it is actually to try and get the neatest pack possible, which so far I am pretty proud of. Um, my idea is that if I can really focus on this, on making it as neat as possible with those really simple block rectangular shapes, uh, then I'm going to learn things that are going to be useful in any case of cross stitch. And I actually already did. Something that it didn't even cross my mind when I was making this is that if you just cover the entirety of the ends of your yarn so you know when you start a new yarn you then make sure to lay it flat and stitch over it to secure it and what i did on the fox is that i did that for two three stitches but then i let the yarn stick out why did i do that <laughs> i don't know uh, so 
For this, you can see that no, it's flat. No ends is sticking up. You can see where the ends actually are tucked because it's like a deeper color and makes a little bulge. But there's no flying stitches. So that's the first thing that I um, learned how to do. <laughs> And yeah, so far it has half of a face and an eye. And I'm stitching it on this really show stiller yellow. So flattering for my skin tone, isn't it? <laughs> it's a really bright yellow Ida uh, fabric. And yes, I feel like it's going to go fairly quickly, which is nice because I have, it's really funny, if you look at my favorites on Etsy, I probably have like a ton of um, cross stitch pattern that I want to do. Um, but yeah, woo. really, really nice. This Ida is super stiff. Um, it's more stiff than the fabric, which is also an Ida. So. It's much stiffer, so I'm actually not sure of how neat I'm going to be able to push it back afterwards. Like, this is not happening. <laughs> um, but yeah, is this all I've been making? Yes. The last segment of this episode is going to be dream knitting slash yarn show. And this week I want to talk about singles single ply yarns. So I grabbed my dropped spindle to show you. Um, I am still spinning on this, um, it just takes forever. I'll show you when it's done. So when you spin yarn, you're first making what's called a single. So it's just one single strand that's twisted on its own. So it's fairly fragile. And what you do later, you can keep it like this, or you can ply it, which is uh, actually taking two or three or four or however many you want, and twist them together, making, in that case, a two-ply yarn. That way you make a stronger thread and it has a little bit different stitch definition. You can make a rounder ply with three or what's called a chain ply, which is going to make a thread that's more um, round. <laughs> and then, then you can tightly twist uh, plies with each other and then take those plies and twist them again uh, with another one. So yeah, there's a lot of different yarn construction, but singles in themselves um, have a specific interest, which is they are super soft. These are two skeins of Made by Black Elephant yarn, which is a dyer from the UK, it's Petra. I highly recommend you follow her Instagram just to be aware of her updates because She's one of my favorite dyers. Her colorways are absolutely beautiful. And this is her singles base. This is Silence. And this is Peachy. So as you can see, it's just one strand. And you actually can tell that it's closer to the first spinning stage because you have some... I don't know if you can tell, but sometimes in Seagull's yarn you have some little uh, curly, bumpy places where the yarn is either too over-twisted. You see that spot here? It's not neat, but you can tell that there's something. It's actually because the tension isn't fully spread. And that happens when you have a single yarn because you don't have another thread to balance it out. It's easier to have a better repartition of the tension in a plied yarn rather than in a singles. This is Superwash Merino, 
So obviously it also has the merino properties of being super soft, but no matter the kind of yarn, uh, singles will always be a little plushier, fluffier, so to say. Which is why they also have a tendency to peel a bit more than plied yarn, and the fibers are more free to flush out. It also means that it's not as strong, because think about it, if you have one strand making a stitch, well, that strand can break and then your whole stitch is broken. Whereas if it's plied, um, you have to wear through more layers of thread. So like I said, singles are really soft and they're also really drapey. And this is kind of an ideal yarn for shawls. Because they're going to be really next to skin soft and plushy. And they're not going to have a great stitch definition like some rounded yarns. You can make lace with single ply quite efficiently. However, cables might look a little bit fuzzy depending on the stitch. So to me, singles really are more about the feel of them and they're the occasion to play with color um, rather than texture. Brioche works really well in singles just because it goes with that squishy filling and you don't need much stitch definition to see brioche, especially if you're making a two-color uh, brioche. This will actually really... Um, these two will look really great in a brioche project, actually. Um, this is not what they will be. They will be together. Um, I will talk about this um, later on, but I plan to make um, my Christmas holiday shawl knitting with those two. In chunkier weight, single ply is also kind of fun for hats, um, mittens, why not? Uh, but definitely I wouldn't recommend picking a single yarn for a garment. Uh, because of the peeling aspect of it and because of how fragile it can be. So as you can guess, it's not really good for socks either. As far as knitting with singles goes, um, I've noticed that most of them, and especially Superwash Merino, are slickier, so they tend to slip out of the needles a little bit easier than other kind of yarns. And they're also a nightmare to wind. I don't know why that is, but winding a single ply yarn, I just can never make it right. Um, it keeps sliding off the cake and making a bulge of yarn at the bottom of the stool, which then of course results in yarn bars, which... nah. Your gauge is obviously going to be different. Um, most of the time it's thinner. Um, for example, this has 366 meters per 100 grams, but when you look at it, when you look at it and compare it to another sock yarn, both are fingering weight, but single ply yarns tend to be more in the light fingering weight color. This is a normal sock yarn. So this means that your gauge will necessarily be different. Um, it's not necessarily a problem for shawls, and you can mix uh, plies and single ply yarn in shawl. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You just have to be aware that the yarns are going to behave slightly differently. And I have an example. I snagged a scarf that I knit my mom um, a year or so ago. No less than that, because I showed it on the podcast, I believe. Um, it's a scarf that I knit out of two yarns because I was afraid I didn't have enough of the main yarn to make a long enough scarf. So the, my main yarn is a single ply. Uh, this is uh, Poison Ivy, I believe, by Knit Cosmic Strings. And uh, the pattern is Strangling Vine Scarf. And so it's lacy, and you can see that even though it's highly variegated, the lace is kind of nice. So, 
what happened is that my borders is Cascade Heritage, which is a plaid yarn. And it's super soft and everything, but it's plied. So you can actually, you can see that it's definitely plumpier and bigger. So once I switch from Cascade Heritage to the Knit Cosmic String single ply, I noticed that the width of my scarf would be significantly smaller, especially since I also had to go down a needle size, because if the size needles that I was using for this made a really nice lacy pattern, if I kept the same size for this, it would have been way too, it would have been way too opened. But if I remember correctly, I went from a four millimeter to a three millimeter needles. So that's quite a big difference. So I had to compensate and add a couple of stitches at each border uh, for the body of the scarf so that there wouldn't be such a massive difference between the plied yarn and the single ply yarn. Of course, this width uh, problem is more obvious in a scarf, but even if you're um, working as a shawl, which has different sections, different blocks of yarn, um, if you're mixing a single ply, uh, holding it together with a plied yarn, um, or even making brioche, I don't think that would make a significant difference. But if you're making a block of a plied yarn and then a block of a single ply, you might notice that your gauge is making the shape of your shawl look weird. This can be perfectly worked out when blocking because the yarn will usually plush up and give you enough room to wiggle with it and make it overall more uniform. But you just have to be aware that single ply will not give you the exact same gauge as a ply yarn. So yeah, I got those two skeins recently and I just thought I'd show you and take the opportunity to talk a little bit about singles. If you have any tips on how to work with singles yarn or just want to share your favorites, um, please feel free to comment down below. I would love to uh, hear your thoughts about this. And with that, I believe that this is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed despite the weird setup and the fact that my camera kept moving. I I hope that I'm going to be able to edit that so that it's not annoying. So yes, thank you so much for joining me this week. I wish you a happy day, night and week and I will see you next time. Bye bye!